See, we we had a conversation, one of the first ones when when uh, we were all together, and and we started talking. It was with Todd Kleckner, huh. and we right. were saying, where how, you know, why don't we see a shot from the? Uh, I get, the hey, this is the North Pole, I believe, but of, of the sun, like because we were saying that's where all the action would seem to be. And yeah. Lo and behold, here's the action. So. We, we, it's, yeah, because I it's I, a composite I, thing. But. Uh huh. Yeah, I'd, I'd read that one of the probes was specifically wanting to be in the polar region. Mm -hmm. So we've probably got counter rotation there, don't we? Yeah, yeah. There's yeah, a lot of stuff, a lot of stuff going on. You know, harmonic relations, a vortex action. You know, uh, really interesting. Mm hmm. So. Uh, what are your thoughts, Heather? Since, since Heather, Heather was the was was the finder from I mean, it's my first exposure to it, What's, what are your thoughts on it? Um, well, I, it, it it's the opposite, right? It's the south pole of the Earth in the same way that the um, it's very similar to the south pole of the Earth, and they they it it, it is a, I, I believe it is a composite. I don't know if a stereo has one that actually goes up. There's like stereo that's ahead of us, and then stereo that's behind us, and then us that triangulates. In order to give us these images, it'd be really interesting if there was more of them um, to know if there was actually more uh, another one or something that goes further up uh -huh. to gather these, or if these are just uh, because they just say stereo, right? SDO stereo. Mm -hmm. What do you mean further up? Well, if there's ones that are um, like north of the ecliptic that that actually monitor the, the poles. That aren't like um, equ equatorial observations. Um, are you talking about the Earth or the Sun? <clears throat> the Sun. Mm. Well, those are taken from the pole. They're taken up. The up, 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 there are ones up at the above the top of the pole. I mean, they, there was a space probe that went above the pole of the sun specifically so they could get images and other measurements from that region is that is sdo is that the that's the the uh, probe or whatever satellite oh i don't know about that i just uh, just in one of the many things that we get from the electric universe they mentioned that they were that there was a probe that was specifically going to the polar region Mm -hmm. So I assume that's where this came from. When was that? Well, sometime in the last year. Okay, maybe you're right. maybe that is where it comes from because it doesn't specify stereo A or stereo B. It just says stereo, which is why I figured it was a composite of them. Um, well, even the thing is, is that even from the pole, um, you know. Who knows how they take the images? It's not just going to be like a movie camera running, you know, that, and composite in terms of maybe combining different frequencies. Mm. So I don't know what they mean by composite. <clears throat> but it's not trying to do it from the equator. Okay. Yeah. But we see, I mean, you see all these, it's the, var the varying movements, you know, as you go radially. Mm -hmm. Pretty significant. You know, it gets right. Definitely. Right, look at this. You know, the, look at the, just the rays. You know, and I'm not sure what this backspin is. It's, I'm wondering if that's an artifact of the camera or not. You know. What? Ba what? What? Oh, you mean the black like, thing? Yeah. Well, it's black, and then it and then it's still it continues to have a, an effect. So I don't know what that the is. The steam. Yeah. Yeah. That's probably just something missing from their composite. Mm -hmm. Because this is under, 
Right. This is like a certain, um, like angstroms, right? So it's like a specific frequency of light al allowance. I, by, as far as I can understand, it's something similar to aperture, like the amount of light that's coming in. Um, mm -hmm. di different amounts of, diff you know, different levels of angstroms produce different images from the same image. Mm -hmm. So I think this is like 193 angstroms. Let me look up on my phone. That's the red one. But uh, see that, yeah, that pizza slice, and then it's like, so there's a seam there, and you can actually follow the seam around it. Mm -hmm. And so that's when I thought it was a composite. As, 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 see, look at how it swirls it. It's almost like that, that seam is stirring it, isn't it? <laughs> it feels like, yeah, right, right. 304 angstroms. Oh, wait, no, sorry. Well, the 4,000 to 7,800 is uh, sort of the visible spectrum, I suppose. Right. Because when they, um, well, when they, yeah, when they break them down, uh, this, this red color that tends to come out like that, that's um, 304. The 193 is is that glowy gold color that comes out. So there's, and I'm trying to see because I've got like this thing about the monitors and the stereos, just uh, stereo ahead, stereo behind, ahead, core, core. It, it, I'm not seeing one. Maybe it's just not added to this specific website yet that monitors them for a polar, for a polar image. Hmm. Um, let's see. Where where can I find this? Here, I, I, the, this is Na, this is NASA actually. So yeah, this is NASA. I'll put this in the uh, chat here. Um, I use SolarHam.net. Uh, I've used it for years, so there's many other ones, and there's probably other ones that have. Uh, but but they have um, real time monitoring on all of the different uh, Lasco, Go, Stereo. They monitor um, space weather, solar storms, things like that. Amateur radio station. Mm. Uh, but uh, yeah, I've been I've been using this site for years, and uh, yeah, there we go. Intensity. So, what do they think they mean by Rosby waves? They call it the same hope. same thing we're seeing. I mean, they've originally. Now, I, I I am out of my league here because because uh, I'm I'm gonna make I'm I'm gonna make assumptions. So so I have a feeling that uh, Heather knows more about them than I do. Um, no, I was actually gonna ask you guys um about the Rosby waves and and it you know who who had if anybody had any more information about what they are um or or what you know what what the. It's fine, but... It's like they're also known as planetary waves are a natural phenomena in the atmosphere and oceans of the planets that largely owe their properties to rotation of the planet. Rosby waves are a sub subset of inertial waves. They were first identified by Carl Gustav Arad Rosby. Mm. So, like, that's why I, I, I mean, I thought, like, that's why I was wondering if you guys had more information because they're, like, surface waves, right? Planetary waves. Do they extend further out? Is it completely within the sphere? These are the questions that I've. I've... Mm -hmm. uh, oh, so so he's talking about things like the jet streams and. Yeah, it says atmospheric yeah. rises on Earth are giant meanderers and high altitude winds that have a major influence on the weather. These waves are associated with pressure systems and the jet stream. Oceanic Rosby waves move along the thermocline, the boundary between the warm upper layer and the cold deeper part of the ocean. Hmm. Okay, so they wouldn't the ones in the atmosphere you know are caused by the same thing as on the sun which is the rotating um, Birkeland current. Mm -hmm. But of course they don't know that. <laughs> I mean this is like super electrical here. <laughs> but you see you see how it all breaks breaks into these sub 
you know, this, it, it, mm -hmm. you know, it, it's 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 got this recursive element to it. A turb the, yeah, the, turbulence like right. like in a river. Right. And I really see it here. Like, look, this is the current. Mm -hmm. That's like actually, yeah, that little spot right there, right in the, just, just, uh, down into the slight left, like you see the central point of where the actual center of the, of the globe is. You can see where they're mm -hmm. all round and that's three, mm -hmm. okay, two, three. Mm -hmm. Right. So that is that the, we're looking at Antarctica. Right. Mm -hmm. So that, that shows the the central part of the current is going counterclockwise, and then the next current out is going clockwise. Um, but then it has all that turbulence as it interacts with different things, continents or whatever, islands. Mm -hmm. Right. <clears throat> it's Very always, good. always this balancing, you know, the balancing. Mm-hmm. Um, a digestive center. Dig dig digestion. Yeah, that's what I was. I, yeah. it, like that's how it feels. It feels like this digestion where it, like is like taking what it needs and distributing it, and then like you know what I mean. Like and then there's waste product or or just like the capacitance, like taking it and just um, making it more reasonable. <laughs> like the planet can't hand. You know what I mean? Like but like. Uh, the word I'm looking for equilibrium well the equilibrium yeah but there's like a um it's, it's a it's a capacitance but it's to, it's a calibration there's a there's a type of there's a um, rectifier it's like rectifying it it's taking the um taking it and doing what it can with it and distributing it appropriately mm -hmm. where, it, where it can be Distributed. Hmm. Distri distribute, distributed DC. Yeah. Kind of, right? So there's, ener yeah. so there's energy. Yeah. That's, that's uh, uh, potentially consumable, right? Mm -hmm. I don't know. Gee, it looks like they're over on the left. It looks almost like a hurricane starting or something. Mm-hmm. Right there, up between New Zealand. A lot of mm -hmm. action in this area these days. There's always a lot of action, like especially tectonic action uh -huh. in that area. Have you seen some of the Hawaii stuff recently? Just... Mm-hmm. Well, we do, we just dove right in. How, how, how's everything going, Richard? Did you have a nice trip? Mm -hmm. um, yeah, yeah. It was very relaxing just hanging out with some people and then we went up to St. Andrews for a day just to walk around the town. Okay. okay. Uh, I was mainly just visiting with my friends there. Okay. He's, he's, he's a writer. He wrote um, Hidden History, The Secret Origins of World War I. Okay. Okay. That sounds very interesting. Very interesting. Oh, it is. Very interesting. Yeah. Turns out it was entirely Britain planned the whole thing. Yeah. Germany was doing everything could, to avoid war. <clears throat> they get into and the they, ball, ball four. They got all the blame afterwards. The ball four <laughs> declaration. Uh, yeah, that was part of it. Yeah. It's pretty radical. Yeah. It's interesting that <clears throat> there's sort of a shadow as the as the currents going past Hawaii. Then on the left there, it's all blue. Like the the islands are casting a shadow. Uh huh. Mm -hmm. Interesting. You can't really see the up and down of the wave in there that way, like you're saying, like it looks a little mountain ridge in a valley. Mm. Mm. Yeah. It's an interesting phenomenon there. It is. So the, the, this is inverted. So so I always uh, how far how, like the small ones are the furthest out. So hmm. Now 
I gotta figure out how to get it. Go down. Go away. All right. That's that's high up. Let's go down. Mm. Let's go down to the surface here. That's more surface. Uh. Yeah. There is like a whole little little um atmospheric mountain range. Yeah, look at this all the way up here. You can see I mean I, I, I haven't looked recently, but we might as well do it now. The uh what's going on. You ever watch Hawaii Five O? Why did they? Why did they name it Philo? I like, I like the other one, <clears throat> with the orange helicopter. Oh, <laughs> which was that? Which was that? I'm trying to remember the name of it. New phases crater. Check that one out. Hawaii new crazes fader. Uh, what is it? Fall, falls quiet. The independent right there under top stories. The very bot. The very first one. Um, because the, the beginning indicator of this, when the when the fissures before the fissures even first started, they were watching the the um, crater on the top of of the, uh, one of the volcanoes, and it started to sink. And as it sank, they became more and more alarmed, and that's when the fissures started to pop up. And then when it really sank down, then they started to get up, uh, get worried that it was going to hit the hit the water, the ground, and then and create more explosive, like combustible plumes when you know the steam and everything got expanded. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. now the crater's like sinking again. Wow. There, see the crater. Uncovered portion of the crater floor. It's sort of like opening up. You can actually see the rivers, you know. And I read yesterday that it was um, at a higher temperature, that the lava spewing out was at a higher temperature than they've seen it yet. It's getting hotter. Mm. It's really interesting. Um, we have some planetary alignments uh, today, actually, and I was worried about tomorrow. I had this like really strong worry about June third for some reason, um, yeah. and then it, because there isn't a planetary alignment that day, but it's between two, and it also looks, looks if you're looking at it from a sidereal or if you're looking at it from a solar. So if the if the sun is in the center of of the map, saying where things are aligned or if things are aligned. From our perspective, Earth was in the center of, you know, the alignments, like how that's all pulling. And uh, June 28th is going to be intense, too, because then we get our opposition to Saturn. And our opposition to Saturn is always crazy. And that's a more, more of a tectonic pull than a volcanic pull. So just buckle up. I have a feeling it's going to be pretty intense. And that also aligns with our full moon. So is this a different path than the than the lava normally follows, or is it just broadened? I don't. I don't. I think that it just builds and and moves along as it goes. You know, I mean, there, there's coming up at different fissures and just like anything, it'll build and then its, it's path of least resistance will change as it builds itself up. Hmm. So it's funny at one end of the. Over in Kauai, you have water building new channels, and then at the other end, you have lava building new channels. <laughs> yeah. And I'm also interested in any, like, what other volcanic activity is happening on the planet right now, aside from Hawaii? Well, no, the big island is where, the, Kauai is where the floods were. Right. 
But I'm just wondering, like, if the Canary Islands um, or somewhere on the other side of the world, mm. uh, maybe because if you could draw a line through it, it might, it might, might. Here we go. <laughs> Good old Google. Yeah, it's amazing, right? Uh, what did we do without it? <laughs> yeah, let's see. Hmm. Ah, see, there's many of these worlds here. All that. <laughs> oh, so. oh, so that's the fire rim around the Pacific. Okay. I've been seeing people post pictures of other volcanoes in other places, and it, it, but they're not posting. Um, they're not all of them have links attached, so you can't see when it was from or. Right. right. They look like teepees. Yeah. Mm hmm. So there's Hawaii right in the middle. Mm hmm. I wonder what the average. Um, That's pretty significant. That was a big one. I felt one. I felt one of those. That's pretty significant. <laughs> the one that exploded, the um, the biggest one that was it was a six point nine. Okay. It had several um, five pointers le leading up to it. Where where was six point nine? In Hawaii. Uh. Um, let me look. Well, it seems to be along coastlines mostly. Yeah. Yeah, May 4th was the uh, 6.9 that hit in Hawaii. And then their big eruptions were like the eighth. And um, so I mean, it sure looks like tectonic plate related. And then um, a, lot, a lot of the EU people are trying to say that the tectonic plate theory is flawed. Well, it's all flawed. Every all of it's flawed. <laughs> but I think it's, I think that once once both sides come to like an agreement that there's both things happening. You know, mainstream isn't completely wrong, and EU isn't completely wrong, and there's a way that these things are interacting together. So th I think that everybody's right. Well, what? And everybody. Okay, you you sound like you have followed it more closely. What? I as, somewhere as as I was the, seeing. As long as it's declarative, it's. I think it's. It, it, okay. It's, but this is such a good point of point of debate. Debate, obviously. Well, Heather. Well, Heather, could you tell us more? What is the, what is the EU theory about it? Um, well, as far as I could tell, the EU theory um, is that there's there's electrical pulses um, pulling through the planet, right? That that cause volcanoes, and that volcanoes are um, the negative, and then the positive is the the atmosphere, and that these things pull on each other and and yank to create these these types of um, formations, volcanoes, reactions, movements, they, they basically like they're, if you, if you picture it as strings, electromagnetic strings that are all tugging and pulling on things and getting in and get just like the weather. It's basically like ground weather. Uh, okay. Well, no, I, I know what you're saying there, but I was thinking more. I mean, some people are saying that, um, rather than tectonic plate movement, it's that the earth is growing in size. I've, you know, okay, so I've, I've, that, I've, that was what I was kind of thinking of, that, 
that line of thinking. Well, I've heard that too, and it does make some some sense that if everything is expanding, you know, from 360 to 365 days, every everything in the whole universe has kind of um, got that propensity to expand out, that it would make sense that the diameter of the sphere would also change and grow and expand out accordingly, right? That makes sense. And, and the fact that all of the volcanoes, most of the volcanoes do seem to be along some kind of coastline or, or they're um, like a relief spot along the plates. Um, but the thing is, is that like these are these are magma pulled, so they're they're coming from say like the liquid within the earth. Like we don't think of like we don't have to think of it as like water liquid. It's plasma, liquid lava, magma inside the earth, and that's being and that's what's being electrically electromagnetically expressed in these ways. Um, if I think about it as like a body, it would be like the adrenals. It would be uh, like your bile. It would be like your um, your the plasma in your blood flow and how it's reacting. Where the plate tectonic actions are more skeletal. Mm. Well, I mean, I, the thing is, if you, I mean, the tectonic theory is that at the edges of the continents, you have one plate going under another plate. Right. right, and so that would where where they cross would sort of create an opening between the plates where magma could come up, and then that seems to make a whole lot of sense, and it seems to match what we're seeing, mm -hmm. um, which which would give a lot of strength to the fact that the plate tectonic movement is one of the major factors involved, and then Definitely. yeah, okay. Go ahead. I didn't mean to interrupt. Go ahead. No, that was, that was all I wanted to say. I was hoping you would add to it or whatever. <laughs> well, I think, but that's why I think that it seems that, and it, like, not to make declarative statements, but really a, a broken clock is right twice a day. So to say, like, everybody's right about some about, about this is is yes, declarative, but it's it's very broad and it's it's. There are these spaces opening up and things are shifting and moving. And when they move, things come up out the middle of them to kind of fill in the gaps or create crevices or all of the things that we do see. Mainstream science, they're not like completely, uh, especially when it comes to G the, the actual movements of how these things are working. Like, yeah, we can look at the function, but what is the cause of the function? Right. Well, that's the part that we didn't, un we have been trying to predict or what the space weather science is have been trying to understand that aspect of it. What is the cause of it? Yes, this happens, but like the Marianas Trench, like I, they say that it's the where it's one plate slipping underneath of another plate and the earth is kind of recycling itself there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'll buy that for a dollar. I could see that. But at the same time, the earth does seem to be expanding and adding new land as these volcanoes come up and magma comes up and more comes out. Obviously, we're making more land and there does seem to be like i wouldn't say stretch marks but the the motion indicators along the ocean floor is showing that there has been some sort of a pulling apart mm -hmm. that looks expansive I, I i when i look at all these ideas and we see all these things it's like i i can understand i can i get it i can see where these these ideas come from it does look like that but why yeah. does it that what triggers that motion what 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 are the things that make it behave this way or react that you know what is the action that causes the reaction yeah, yeah right. the, the, the eu is is showing a better you know like oh yes this is definitely a, a, um electromagnetic energetic cause mm-hmm Right. Yeah. I mean, the, the, the one that, the, I mean, the one that starts as far as the picture that comes together, and this is obviously the stretch, but, but uh, it's that circuit that we're kind of, that we're at least uh, uh, entertaining between the sun and the earth. What is that as far as like a, uh, a, a, a what's, the, what's the function of that thing? What's the purpose of that thing? And then is the action that we're seeing part of a purpose and that's where it, that's where it starts getting into pretty interesting questions purpose 
Yeah. I thought you were the one staying away from declarative. That's not declarative. <laughs> That's a question. It's not. It's not declarative. Oh. Well, to to ask. It, well, is there a purpose? Is not declarative. What's the purpose? Is declarative. Because it's okay, claiming right. there is a you're purpose. Right. Right. Okay, okay, okay. Well, let's, let's go back. Is there is there a purpose? It, what's the function, or is there a function, or is it right? Random? Seems like there's a function. There's got to be a function. And I think it has just as much to do with like how much water is being taken in along with the land as the as that plate slides under the other one. I mean, this, this, it's this observation. This is this is where the this is where the break is. I think I mean, this this is this is where you start hitting the hitting the wave, and it, it's it's there's been a been a point of the observation, the 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 the, the detail of the op observation puts a, the puts the this is where it's empirical puts that the most the most precise observation. All of a sudden, there's a deification of the observation versus like what the well, what's why is it they, 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 they always stay away from why you know and this is this is this is actually the, the, the part of part of what my my driving inquiry why why do you stay away from why well it's a reaction to to religion of so course. it's like science well this science is, but this is ever since the 16th century science has been trying to separate itself from religion mm -hmm. uh so that, that's why and, science and, and, stays and away from is, ultimately has castrated the entire process of, uh, of 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 what gives anything life. Right, right. So I I don't know if if one was to entertain purpose, I would see it as a descending. Would you? Uh, I see it as a descending. Well, I mean, it depends on which, which whether you're looking from the top or the bottom. Exactly. Or the, I mean, right. <laughs> but I mean, it's like. Um, a galaxy, a galaxy cluster creates the possibility of there being a galaxy. Then a galaxy creates the possibility of there being a star. Then a star creates the possibility of there being a planet. And a planet creates the possibility of there being life. What if it's all, Unless you what want if to it's say all that, life? It's, this is the material well, versus, versus uh, what if it's all alive? Well, I mean, life as we know it, carbon-based carbon life... Uh, is, can only this, exist this, where there's carbon an, this molecules. Is this is anthropocentric <laughs> point of view. Right. No, that's one thing. See, I, you and I have different philosophies. My philosophy is to be declarative until I'm proven wrong, which is just, <laughs> which, which is, which is another, it's just another way to pursue truth. You know. No, I know. I know. I know. I, I, I totally uh, agree. I mean, in in my in whenever in my decl declarations are always um, conditional on. Waiting for evidence, you know. Right. right. But I, but I see humanity as the pinnacle. <laughs> it's just sort of like the Christian. Yeah. Why? Isn't that arrogant? Um. Well, I'm not saying that uh, humans are superior to other life, but but they're how a combination you know, how, how of certain, know we're not an certain evolutionary how, path. How, 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 what, just this scenario to entertain, you know, but what keeps uh, us from considering that we're each just like cells within another organism? Well, I don't know. <clears throat> isn't, it, isn't, it, isn't that something, isn't that a, a, val a, a valid, uh, 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 just hypothesis to entertain? Well, I mean, but our sociology is so different than that of ants or bees. How? Um, we're less coordinated, you know. How do you not? Have, well, do you think so? So that I believe in free will. Right. Yeah. I think an ant may have free will. Well, it has intelligence because you know, like ants, they'll try to move something and it doesn't work. They'll try another approach and keep trying approaches till they find one that works. They so have an imperative for sure. Yeah, but I mean, they they actually show intelligence of a kind of, you know, saying, well, we can't lift it this way. Let's try to push it, you know, the, the, you know, things like that. Right, right. Um, but they all, they act like cells of an organism much more than humans do. 
So do you think that that might have something to do with the, um, our language and the way that we, the way that we, because for every, I mean, the way that we think is exact is exactly related to the words that we know or how we use the words that we know. So there was um, a TED talk recently. This woman was talking about a tribe in an Aboriginal tribe in Australia that refers to everything in a cardinal direction. So they'll be like, my Southwest foot hurts. <laughs> you know? oh, right. Like, you know, and it gives them um, this directional ability in every aspect that they, that the majority thinks is bred out of people. Like they don't have, we don't have specific sensors, magnetic sensors in an organ in our body that tells us which direction what goes. But this tribe is very adept at doing that because they address everything that way. And <laughs> And so, like, um, if, if, like, I do, I mean, we do have free will, but maybe we might have more of, if we look at different cultures, as opposed to, like, humanity as a species, and see some cultures do, are more pr uh, prone to drone-like behavior, collective behavior, um, and, and other ones are completely shattered and broke off, like, don't, don't, they're like nomads, and they, you know what I mean, very seldomly work together it's, it's more of a um independent idea do you think that maybe if we if we embrace uh, i want to say embraced but um, cult like cultivated these types of things within ourselves that we might have the abilities that some of these animals do like they're in us too well, well i okay i would agree with what i think you're saying is that our societies are um sort of destroy parts of humanity that that you see not destroyed in aboriginal cultures yeah. definitely i mean i think i mean we evolved as one thing about aboriginal societies is that they're all small units that act cooperatively mm -hmm. um and that so that we evolved being part of a supportive community and if we're not in a supportive community, it's sort of like being an orphan. Mm -hmm. So it's like, compared to Aboriginal societies, we're all orphans, mm -hmm. wish, wishing to go back home. <laughs> wow, that's awesome. I mean, that, uh, if that's, I, that's what I believe, which I think is kind of the thing you're saying. Yeah, and that's interesting, too, because um, a Native American, I've talked to Dave about this before, but there was a, um, this really wise old man that I met one time and he gave me all kinds of useful tidbits and one of them was that love and um, that trust and respect are the parents of love and without them love is an orphan child and that right to me yeah and so looking at it in this perspective the aborigines um, respect the world their world the world their place in it and they trust in it and give it their trust and, and it can trust them back that there will be a reciprocation of that and that is the true love that allows them to be a part of the uh, like the cosmic family that maybe we are um, orphaned from because we have lost our trust for it because we have lost our respect for it and now right. I, yeah, and part of the civilization process is is demonization of the past and you know separating us from our roots. I mean, the Aboriginals are so interesting. They're in in Australia are interesting in so many ways. I was hearing there was one anthropologist who was with spending time with the Aborigines, and he noticed that they were behaving in ways that exhibited telepathy. Mm -hmm. um, and he asked them, he said, why are you able to uh, communicate that way? And he said, oh, it's because we, we never lie and we never have secrets. Right. And you right. could see how, and we, we all have secrets, you know, and we, we're at a cocktail party, we're very so, careful yeah. what we say. And so that creates a barrier in our minds and that barrier... We're hiding ourselves right. in a way, and that barrier c prevents us from communicating openly, mentally. Mm. Because we, we consciously do not want to be openly communicated with mentally. Absolutely. Well, we're, threatened. we're threatened by being thrown out of the group. We're threatened, yeah. we're threatened by ostr ostracization. <laughs> I always have trouble with that word.
here's another awesome quote that I got this week from um, a quote thing that I get, but it was, um, he who wishes to conduct the orchestra must turn his back on the crowd. Uh-huh. Hmm. It's like so, uh, Jim Morrison. Right, but like oh, so, that, that. Oh, go ahead. So what is that? Okay, that's an interesting metaphor, but what is it a metaphor for? Right. How does that apply? Because I mean, what is what's what's the social implication of that observation? Social implication of that is that we are so um, busy playing for the crowd that we we are um, like if we if we truly want to see how this works and truly be integrated into that tele- telepathic openness, right? We have to turn our back on what we think everyone is watching, what everyone is looking at, and actually become interactive with the players of the instruments and allow ourselves to be be that with intention mm. with intention because as long as we are the players playing for the crowd we're looking at them and it's our expectation of of them so or of that or what is our you know what i mean and if we're part of the crowd we're watching and if we're part of the the um symphony if we're part of the, the players then we we have a different part of it if we are the conductor we have the choice to either be the observer to be um or to be the person who who brings it all together the person who masters these things you are you are the one who tells the strings when to come in you're the one that tells the horns when to quiet it. You're the one that tells these things, and everything is going by by your conduction, conductor. It's very. I've always like, thought this was uh, like a very strange. Uh, work. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, what one of the things just to jump in this because it kind of I think on a, on a side string it does is Robert Lawler really really worthy of, of some study. I've, I've done I've done a bit of it and. Uh, he he did the it was the the temple of man this whole you know really in depth uh, uh, transcription basically of someone who had studied deeply the Luxor and that entire that entire thing and how and geometrically how that relates he spent like ten years doing it and got quite a bit of uh, high accolades for his work but he spent of of all the things in his recent interviews. The thing that he says is most profound is is the time that he spent with the Aborigines. So this mm. is a guy of a deep study who, as far as like consciousness, because mm. he's, he's studying consciousness. So, so this just kind of to tie back around in a in a loopy way back to the Aborigines and and what Heather's saying. It's like the, he, this guy's picking up on something pretty profound. Yeah, I've just looked him up in Wikipedia, so I can look at that later. Yeah. Uh, so he was living in Oroville for a while. I've heard a lot of people have left Oroville. I don't even know what that yeah. is. Actually. Well, I think it's sort of a intentional, a large intentional community in India. I think. Okay. Uh huh. I've heard about it from different sources, and uh, you know, one of these things is a great idea, but it. It's disappointing in some ways. Oh, and, right, like, an, like an, a utopian <clears throat> kind of. Yeah. I mean, in, in a lot of those things, what you have is something where they say we have no leaders. You know, whenever right. I'm always suspicious <laughs> when I'm not saying there always has to be leaders, but uh, if, the, if, if there isn't a, an evident structure, then there's usually a hidden structure. Right. Right. You get it. I mean, you get into that thing where uh, it kind of naturally happens where, OK, this is a big collective, but there's only a few people that are actually the producers. You know? Yeah. And or there's, there's a natural imbalance that occurs. And, and there are some people that have all kinds of personal influence that ends up being can end up being uh, dictatorial, let's say. Mm hmm. But all with smiles and all right. oh, yeah. and <laughs> behind the and scenes. And, yeah, this is the good. The and good. we don't think you're being good enough. You should leave the community. <laughs> yeah, we're all about love and good, but uh, yeah. But but even of course, <laughs> getting back, kind of going back to where we're talking about cooperative uh, societies, and but like 
Okay, I was in there. I was reading one book about um, uh, Crazy Horse, and yeah. so you know, and the, and the Oglalas. Um, I mean, there'd still be sort of psychopaths who committed murder and things, you know, um, within that. Uh, it's not that everybody was the wonderful cooperative person. There were also, uh, you know, anomalies within that. Right. Well, it's neither one, you know, neither one or the other. I mean, it's it, it, usually pretty dramatic. There's usually a pretty dramatic event they kind of, they get pegged into, you know. But mm -hmm. especially when there's that much dy dy dynamic going on, right? Someone like mm -hmm. someone like this is kind of a cornerstone, you know, historical. In fact, I think Crazy Horse ended up being murdered by somebody, if I'm not mistaken, by another uh, member of the tribe. Mm -hmm. What's the story again? Be, be, behind, just trying to. Put well, he you. he was you know a leader like uh, you know many of the other ones. Um, who, you know, defended his people, like Sitting Bull, mm -hmm. Crazy Horse, and many others you've heard about, you know. Because in the, with being attacked by the European settlers kind of forced the Indians, the natives, to take on a more hierarchical military structure in order to fight, defend themselves. Right. Uh, and suddenly, you know, someone would be given the authority to command several tribes, which didn't exist before the Euro Europeans came. Right, right. It was, you know. Usually because of courage or some kind, some type of, you know, obviously, you know, the, the, the naming, which is basically an element of their, their spirit persona, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's pretty fascinating. Boy, you're you're so good at rapidly coming up with data and images for us, whatever we're oh, talking thank you. about. Yeah, well, you know, that's for, <laughs> it's for practicing. I've just done it a little bit now. It's really not very hard, by the way. So, so. Well, but you're you're doing it. <laughs> yeah, 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 no, I know. Well, so, you know, someone's got to do it. <laughs> Much appreciated. Yeah. <laughs> so. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's, it's 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 really nice to just kind of re re-examine this stuff from from our our new uh, our, our current point of view rather than what has been kind of uh, served up a la McDonald's, you know. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, so we're right. at a very pivotal time when so many things are being re-examined. Yeah. Seems like it. It's uh, it, it, pretty exciting. I mean, I've, I've seen it kind of, you know, grow pretty rapidly uh, over the last uh, three years. Mm -hmm. it's, 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 you know, they're, they're they're labeling it the Great Awakening. You know, this is kind of common parlance at this point. Yeah. Well, I think I mean, I it's it's def uh, the internet has been. A, a wonderful gift. I mean, to those who know how to use it properly, like you're, like you're using it, and like to to be able to investigate right away, right offhand. So we have this unbelievable tool to learn and communicate. And do you, I mean, look, we're talking to you. I mean, I, we're all in different parts of the earth right now. We're all in different parts of the planet, and we can share with each other these things. It's like, yes, before. I mean, think about how long it would take someone just to get from point A to point B. Granted, that had some amazing benefits that we're lacking nowadays, like the ability to sit quietly with yourself, introspection, you know, patience. Mm -hmm. the, you know, we do live in a society now of like instant gratification, but it's not all bad because we can we can get to these conclusions. So how do we balance that with the ability to sit with some of these things for a while? Because I know, I mean, I know it affects you guys. It affects me sometimes. Like, okay, I need to sit quietly and just digest all of this it's for a minute. Hardest, it's the hardest thing. In fact, like that that thing is is uh, uh, in many ways subverted 
just because of the way society's structured you, to sit quietly and be able to spend, you know, a, because because you're locked into our you know your work week and then and then and then you know here here okay now that we now that we wound you up so hard during the week now you got to unwind for two days and then start over again and it's you never have that time to get into that you know the the, the stillness at all you know and that, yeah. and that's where the answers come from it seems like to me yeah yeah. And they say like, oh, you know, they try to remind people to take time for themselves and then, but then they demand so much that you really can't, or you feel like that, that two day break was actually a rest when it wasn't, it was, I mean, it was, but it, it just gets you back to where you can start to think again and then it gets taken away from you again. And it's like, um, I, that I, I, I like, I like the ability to. I, I, I try to make that appointment in my life like I can't I can't work in something that's so high paced and hectic all the time that I uh, lose my mind because I will lose my mind you know I mean give ourselves the ability to sit and read you won't believe how I mean how I go on these these chats I go on the comment bars the you know just like open forum things and talk to people and hardly anybody reads the book hardly anybody hardly anybody actually you know, looks deeper into it. Right. And it's, I don't think it's for lack of wanting. I think it's for lack of time. We just don't have the time. And when we do have the time, we're so fried. That well, it's, yeah, it's like I've, in some sense, I never had the time to really pursue anything until I retired. Right. Yeah. Right. Right. And you got to write. I mean, writing is obviously that, that process, right? I mean, where you, yeah. where, you, where, you, where you where you pull yourself out and then and then examine it, you know, for, out, out of out of out of the normal societal time time frame, right? Yeah, and so many like for myself and for many, it's like the process of writing. It feels more like channeling, you know. Yes. Not not not, not channeling from some ancient, you know, pharaoh or something, but uh, channeling from your own subconscious I think it's right. both it's like you know like I have an idea and I start writing but by the time I get to the end it's quite different than what I had in mind when I started <laughs> yeah right right it tells you I mean it ends up being your, I mean this is what I get it's, it's it ends up being like a conversation with the thing you know and all of a sudden the thing has has its own you know, I, I, I've shared this a couple of times. But it's like if if I put my intention in it too hard, it doesn't come out nearly as good as if I let it put its intention in and I listen to its intention. Well, and also it's it's like um, in the case where I've you know, let's say I've had some serious problem in my life and I wanted to figure some way out of it. I found that if I start writing, then the first couple. Paragraphs, you might say, Street are well, the things that have been buzzing around in my head, worrying me. But once I've written them down, then I get down to what was below that. But uh, but I never could have got to what was below that until I had um, excreted or you know expressed right. <laughs> that <laughs> stuff that that first <laughs> level of yeah. stuff. Right. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I'll, I wrest, I'll wrestle with something that, 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 that like, it, it doesn't come out and it just fails. It's total, it's, it's just absolutely a mess. But it's like the process of doing it led me to the next thing that ends up being some, like, justification for that, all that frustration. You know? mm-hmm. now, Heather, you keep trying to break in. Go ahead. I'm just delighted to listen to you. I'm just uh, 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 verbally agreeing. Like, yes, yes, hey, yes, mm, totally. <laughs> yes. Because that, what it, it's like these, but yes, this, these layers. And it is like sometimes you just have to write down a bunch of ri- whatever crazy crap just to realize like how disorderly it actually is in your thoughts. And then when you sit down, just like you said, these things that have been buzzing and whirling and you put them down and, and then you can, okay, that is the layer to what, take each part apart or what did it, what was underneath it that you had no idea 
was there and then there's like a relief and there's this active part and I definitely think it is channeling it's channeling yes your subconscious it's channeling all those like file folders that you've got you know sitting on the desk in your brain that uh, how do they relate to one another but I think it also is like like being able to sit there and take your thoughts and channel them through your hands into something visual and now all of those senses are activated and you can tap into the collective unconscious you can tap into the to the uh, to the universe you can you can tap into god you can that that's how you do it is through through those methods you are opening those channels and you're writing them down and um that's the same thing through artists it's that it's that activation of all of those centers those nerve centers brain centers sens uh, sensory centers your hands your eyes your it's, it's activating all of those things um th and and it takes you out of your ego it takes you out of yourself and it puts you into your higher self the other state where all of these things can be occupied so that you can get get into the nitty gritty of, of the thing. And it's this unbelievable uh, relief. And that's why I excrete. I was like, yes, it just mm -hmm. kind of comes out, you know, and it needs to be there. And then when you look at it, you're like, oh, like this is so, so I had this awesome um, professor who would tell us to write with vigor, edit with them. <laughs> and so just let it, let that like let that flow out of you don't worry about if you spell that don't worry if there's a period or a comma or if this even makes sense because oftentimes like you're saying like I'll just start write something down and that paragraph will wind up in the middle or at the end or it will become six different paragraphs that thing isn't necessarily mm -hmm. got to be your opening line don't freak out about your opening line or how you're going to start this because when you go back into the editing process is when you're going back into it's like a totally different animal and now you're looking at all of those thoughts and looking at that conversation that you had with the thing and organizing it from going from the subconscious into the conscious and how could I how does that communicate to other people's conscious and yet at the same time tap their subconscious and open that channel for them that uh, it's so beautiful it's so you said it so beautifully Hmm. I feel almost but, relieved now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. What are, What are we looking at? Oh, this I don't know. Have you ever heard of this guy? I, it's, uh, I, I've I've run into him. It's Ma uh, Max Egan. Because uh, it, it it jumps all around historically and the guy, yeah it's it's uh, yeah this guy. Uh, I just I I I've been over the last maybe two months kind of linking in linking into him. Let's see his channel here. But uh, he's talking about a lot of the stuff. I would say, as far as like the narrative that we're kind of talking about, he's one, he's one of the leaders, uh, or 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 voices of it for sure. Um, let's see the the Crow House. But uh, he he does these radio shows, and they're about an hour long, and it's just his his kind of uh, freewheeling dialogue. But he's very articulate. I think I think he's British, probably. But uh, uh, surviving the matrix. Yeah. See, look at that. The crow house dot com. Right. right he's, he's, he's right on line, right on line with you. So. Right. You got it. In, I order, in so, order to escape it, you got to survive it. Right. <laughs> so I, you know, I wrote this article called escaping the matrix. Many, many years ago. And. It was. And it, at that, there was less stuff going on in the internet then, and it went viral. And I'm just wondering what, it, how much that particular article influenced the use of the matrix metaphor so much now. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Just right. open that. Oh. Well, the weird thing, I mean, just as far as like the repetition, the mirroring goes, it's like where did they come up with it? You know, the Wachowski brothers. Yeah, because it kind of plays pretty. I mean, the first I I I, I wasn't into the you know I I, I I perused the second one and didn't even take any look at the third one, but the first one was pretty profound. I thought. Oh yeah, the first yeah I agree. I mean, the first one was metaphor, mm -hmm. and the other ones were science fiction. Yeah. Right. <laughs> and not particularly interesting science fiction. Okay. <clears throat> In my view. Right. Right. 
but I mean the red the red pill has become a a meme that is that, that's gone all over the place. You know, the last two yeah. three years. That it was uh, drink this and shrink and eat this and grow. I think it's just <laughs> I think it's just all um, an adaptation for Wonderland, really. Yeah. 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 Through the glass. What's up with that Cheshire cat? I have. I have such a problem <laughs> you, with. Yeah. What's up with that guy? <laughs> he keeps popping in. <laughs> well, I wonder if if there was a psychedelic uh, aspect to uh, the inspiration behind Alice in Wonderland. Oh, I'm sure of it. I think so. I mean, but but it, it, I mean, just to get a, a little esoteric, but G- Goodell Escher Bach. Have you ever read that, uh, Richard? Uh, well, I was. I was in the same undergraduate class with Doug. Oh man! Okay, wow. What was he like? <laughs> what was he? What? What? A, what? A, I mean, that that book was like. It was one of my in college. It was just like, finally, I can breathe with this book. You know. Uh, <laughs> he was just a very gentle guy, you know. Uh, I mean, his father was is, I guess, famous in some. He was a professor at Stanford. I, forget, I think he was into history or something. I'm not sure, but Doug was full, totally mathematics. Uh huh. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Did you get to spend time with him at all? Yeah, oh. I'd hang out with. And he was an usher. He was an usher at my wedding. Oh really? Wow. Okay. Yeah. Awesome. And then I did. I tell you this experience? No. Okay. I had a very interesting experience. I was working at Apple, and. We had every week there was a seminar where somebody would come in and give a talk. Uh-huh. And so this one time, Doug was coming with one of his students. And I came in late and s- quietly came in and sat in the back. And uh, his student was giving a presentation, and Doug was sitting in the first row looking at the student, you know. And at the end of the presentation, I raised my hand and asked a question. And the student didn't quite understand what I was asking. And Doug, without ever having turned around, says, I think what Richard meant. (laughs) (laughs) So, like, he recognized my voice, you know. Right, 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 right. So I was, it was like, you know, it was was like, uh, I was really chuffed, you know. It's like, here's, here's the guest of honor recognizing me by his voice in front of all these people, you know. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I felt honored. Absolutely. I mean, the funny thing about this book is that that he it, it's it's like the thread that runs through the whole thing is like a dialogue, a, a, a lot of allusions to Alice in Wonderland. You know? Ah, you know. so. well, that's one of those books which I bought and started and never finished. I should probably go back to it's it. It's a great one. It's really great. Yeah, just as far as far as like you know, in the uh, uh, introduction to the power of recursion. Mm-hmm. And then, and then, okay. and then, use of it as as a creative tool. You know? Yeah, now he's he's definitely a genius. <laughs> yeah, it's amazing. It's funny. I mean, it's a, it's a, it's actually you know it it, it it's got a, a a very light heart to it, along with the it go it goes very deep, but it's also got a light heart, which is really neat. So, so what? It's all online. Yeah. I got it here. I got it. Give me a link. It's funny. It's like it's easier for me to read things on the screen. I, me too. Me, I, it's very difficult for me uh-huh. to pick up a book these days and physically pick. Up yeah, a book. I mean, if I pick up a book, I I can't read very many pages before I feel kind of fatigued. Right. <laughs> um, and partly because it's your posture, you're looking down at a. Whereas the screen, I'm sitting in a nice, comfortable office chair, you know, with five wheels and all that, and and looking at a light emitting screen and it's just so much easier to read more comfortable mm-hmm. I, I work on Although, a, I, I work on a projector so it's like i have a very i i, I decided when i had when i was i had i was I, I had a my my pocket was full so it's like i saw i was in a plane and i saw this chair and it was like twenty five hundred dollars it's like i have to get that chair it's like that chair <laughs> is important and uh so I, that's that's the chair I live in, and I and I work off a projector, and it's like it's very difficult for me to look at just a monitor right now. You know? 
because it's because it's big in front of me. Yeah. Oh, well, not, it, I have a very very. Is it a, is it a projector from behind or in front or from? It, it, how does it work? It's from be, it's 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 behind my chair and it shoots forward oh. and the screen is about probably the 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 horizontal is about 12, 15 feet. But I, well, I mean, I have a humble, I have a humble abode, there, but it sounds, it, that sounds very exotic, I know, but it's like, I have a humble abode, but it's like, this is, this is my, it, it's like right at the front door you come in, and it's it's like, here's my, here, here's where I live, right on this projector. But, but it, would it, I mean, is it really better for you than, say, a large plasma display? It feels better, because it's, it's like, it's not, it's, it's just, it, it's just, you know, projected onto a screen, there's not, there's not anything mm. coming, coming at me, so. I don't know. Whatever. Well, you're gonna you're gonna show me that when I visit you in LA. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, <laughs> for sure. yeah. Looking forward to that. Yeah, definitely, definitely. <laughs> so this is a great great meetup for today. You know, I mean, I, I, yeah. I, I hate let it, let, letting them go too long because they get they can get ponderous. You know, so so yeah. we'll, we'll, we can uh, we can leave it for now and look forward to to the next one. Yeah, yeah, because then it. You, you feel like you can do it without fearing that you're going you know, to lose the whole day kind of thing. Yeah. Right. Right. Exactly. So anyway, it's been good. And Heather, really good to have you here. And, uh, hey, great talking to you, Richard. Always yeah. glad you, glad you had fun in Scotland. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so, uh, so I guess Dave, I'll see you Tuesday. Heather, I don't know if you go to the Tuesdays or not. Sometimes I do. And sometimes I don't, but, um, but yeah, yeah. I, we'll see. We'll do. We'll definitely do these Saturdays. They've been, they've, they've been really fun. So, so. Yeah, they they so work. With the, they've with the, actually worked better for me because. Me too. Uh, me too. Uh, yeah, it's a smaller group and we. You know, we <laughs>